Hello and welcome. Welcome to day 11. Um, as we're reading through the Holy Bible in 90 days, we are reading from the King James Version. And today on day 11, we are going to be reading or finishing off Exodus, which is Exodus chapters 38 through chapters 40. And then we're going to move to Numbers 7, chapter 7 through chapters 9, okay? And then Leviticus chapters 1 through chapter 6. So <laughs> it'll all make sense, <laughs> but we are going to finish Exodus today, the last three chapters, Exodus 38 through Exodus 40, again, we're going to uh, read Numbers chapter 7 through chapters 9. So three chapters in Numbers. And then we're going to head over to Leviticus and read chapters 1 through chapters 6. All right. Are we ready to begin? Uh, let's uh, begin. <laughs> Exodus chapter 38. And he made the altar of burnt offering of shittim, shittim wood. Five cubits was the length thereof and five cubits the breadth thereof. It was four square and three cubits the height thereof. And he made the horns thereof on the four corners of it. The horns thereof were of the same. And he overlaid it with brass. And he made all the vessels of the altar, the pots and the shovels and the basins and the flesh hooks and the fire pans, all the vessels thereof made he of brass. And he made for the altar a brass and grate of network under the compass thereof beneath unto the mist of it. And he cast four rings for the four ends of the grate of brass to be places for the staves. And he made the staves of shitty and wood and overlaid them with brass. And he put the staves into the rings on the sides of the altar to bear it with all. He made the altar hollow with boards. And he made the laver of brass and the foot of it of brass of the looking glasses of the women assembling, which assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he made the court on the south side, southward, the hangings of the court were fine twin linen, a hundred cubits. Their pillars were 20 and their brass and sockets 20. The hooks of the pillars and their fillets were of silver. And for the north side, the hangings were a hundred cubits. Their pillars were 20 and their sockets of brass 20. The hooks of the pillars and their fillets of silver and for the west side were hangings of 50. Fifty cubits, their pillars ten and their sockets ten, the hooks of the pillars and their fillets of silver. And for the east side, eastward, fifty cubits. The hangings of the one side of the gate were fifteen cubits, their pillars three and their sockets three. And for the other side of the court gate, on this hand and that hand were hangings of 15 cubits, their pillars three, and guess what? Their sockets three. All the hangings of the court roundabout were of fine twin linen, and the sockets for the pillars were of brass, the hooks of the pillars and their fillets of silver, and overlaying of their chapters of silver, and all the pillars of the court were filleted with silver. And the hanging for the gate of the court was needlework of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twin linen. And two cubits was the length and the height and the breadth was five cubits answerable to the hangings of the court. And their pillars were four and their sockets of brass four, their hooks of silver and the overlaying of the chapters and their fillets of silver and all the pans of the tabernacle and of the court round about were brass. This is the sum of the tabernacle, even of the tabernacle of testimony, as it was counted according to the commandment of Moses for the service of the Levites by the hand of Ithamar, son to Aaron, the priest, and Basilel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, made all that the Lord commanded Moses. And with him was Aholiab, son of Amaka of the tribe of Dan, an engraver and a cunning workman and an embroiderer in blue and in purple and in scarlet and fine linen. 
all the gold that was occupied for the work and all the work of the holy place, even the gold of the offering was 20 and nine talents and 730 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary. And the silver of them that were numbered of the congregation was a hundred talents and a thousand seven hundred and three score and 15 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary. A bacaw for every man in his half a shekel after the shekel of the sanctuary for every one that went to be numbered from 20 years old and upward for 600,000 and 3,000 and 550 men. And of the hundred talents of silver were cast the sockets of the sanctuary and the sockets of the veil, a hundred sockets of the hundred talents and a talent for a socket. And of the thousand seven hundred seventy and five shekels, he made hooks for the pillars and overlaid their chapters and fillet them. And the brass of the offering was seventy talents and two thousand and four hundred shekels. And therewith he made the sockets to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and the brass and altar and the brass and great forward and all the vessels of the altar and the sockets of the court round about and the sockets of the court gate and all the pins of the tabernacle and all the pins of the court round about. Exodus chapter 39. And of the blue and purple and scarlet, they made cloths of service to do service in the holy place and made the holy garments for Aaron as the Lord commanded Moses. And he made the ephod of gold, blue and purple and scarlet and fine twin linen. And they did beat the gold into thin plates and put it into wires to work it in the blue and in the purple and in the scarlet and in the fine linen with cunning work. They made shoulder pieces for it to couple it together by the two edges was it coupled together. And the curious girdle of his ephod that was upon it was of the same according to the work thereof of gold, blue and purple and scarlet and fine twin linen as the Lord commanded Moses. And they wrought onks, stones, and clothes, and ouches of gold graven as signets are graven with the names of the children of Israel. And he put them on the shoulders of the ephod that they should be stones for a memorial to the children of Israel as the Lord commanded Moses. And he made the breastplate of cunning work like the work of the ephod of gold, blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine twin linen. It was four square. They made the breastplate double. A span was the length thereof and a span the breadth thereof being doubled. And they set it in four rows of stones. The first row was a sardis, a topaz, and a carbuncle. That was the first row. And the second row, an emerald, a sapphire, and a diamond. And the third row, a ligure, an agate, and an amethyst. And the fourth row, a beryl, an onyx, and a jasper. They were enclosed in ouches of gold in their enclosings. And the stones were according to the names of the children of Israel, 12 according to their names. Like the engravings of a signet, every one with his name, according to the 12 tribes. And they made upon the breastplate chains at the ends of wreath and work of gold. And they made two ouches of gold and two gold rings and put the two rings in the two ends of the breastplate. They put the two wreathen chains of gold and the two rings on the ends of the breastplate. And the two ends of the two wreathen chains, they fastened in the two ouches and put them on the shoulder pieces of the ephoid before it. And they made two rings of gold and put them on the two ends of the breastplate upon the border of it, which was on the side of the ephoid inward. And they made two other golden rings and put them on the two sides of the ephoid underneath toward the fore part of it over against the other coupling thereof above the curious girdle of the ephoid and did bind the breastplate by his rings unto the rings of the ephoid with a lace of blue 
that it might be above the curious girdle of the ephoid and that the breastplate might not be loose from the ephoid as the Lord commanded Moses. And he made the robe of the ephoid of woven work all of blue. And there was a hole in the midst of the robe as the hole of you know, a habergion and a band round about the hole that it should not rend. And they made upon the hems of the robe pomegranates of blue and purple and scarlet and twin linen. And they made bales of pure gold and put the bales between the pomegranates upon the hem of the robe round about between the pomegranates, a bale and a pomegranate, a bale and a pomegranate round about the hem of the robe to minister in as the Lord commanded Moses. And they made coats of fine linen woven work for Aaron and for his sons and a mitre of fine linen and goodly bonnets of fine linen and linen breeches of fine twin linen and a girdle of fine twin linen and blue and purple and scarlet of needlework as the Lord commanded Moses. And they made the plate of the holy crown of pure gold and wrote upon it a writing like to the engravings of a signet holiness to the Lord. And they tied into it a lace of blue to fasten it on high upon the mitre as the Lord commanded Moses. Thus was all the work of the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation finished and the children of Israel did according to all that the Lord commanded Moses. So did they. And they brought the tabernacle unto Moses, the tent and all his furniture, his tatches, his boards, his bars and his pillars and his sockets and the covering of ram skins dyed red and the covering of badger skins and the veil of the covering, the ark of the testimony and the staves thereof and the mercy seat, the table and all the vessels thereof and the shoe bread, the pure candlestick and with the lamps thereof, even with the lamps to be set in order and all the vessels thereof and the oil for light and the golden altar and the anointing oil and the sweet incense and the hanging for the tabernacle door, the brazen altar and his grate of brass, his staves and all his vessels, the laver and his foot, the hangings of the court, his pillars and his sockets and the hanging for the court gate, his cords and his pins and all the vessels of the service of the tabernacle for the tent of the congregation, the cloths of service to do service in the holy place and the holy garments for Aaron the priest and his son's garments to minister in the priest's office. According to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so the children of Israel made all the work and Moses did look upon all the work and behold, they had done it as the Lord had commanded. Even so had they done it and Moses blessed them. Exodus chapter 40. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, on the first day of the first month shall thou set up the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation. And thou shalt put therein the ark of the testimony and cover the ark with the veil. And thou shalt bring in the table and set in order the things that are to be set in order upon it. And thou shalt bring in the candlestick and light the lamps thereof. And thou shalt set the altar of gold for the incense before the ark of the testimony and put the hanging of the door to the tabernacle. And thou shalt set the altar of the burnt offering before the door of the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation. And thou shalt set the laver between the tent of the congregation and the altar and shall put water therein. And thou shalt set up the court round about and hang up the hanging at the court gate. And thou shalt take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and all that is therein and shall hollow it and all the vessels thereof and it shall be holy. And thou shalt anoint the altar of the burnt offering and all his vessels and sanctify the altar and it shall be an altar most holy. And thou shalt anoint the laver and his foot and sanctify it and thou shalt bring Aaron and his sons unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and wash them with water. 
and thou shalt put upon Aaron the holy garments and anoint him and sanctify him that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And thou shalt bring his sons and clothe them with coats and thou shalt anoint them as thou didst anoint their father that they may minister unto me in the priest's office for their anointing shall surely be an everlasting priesthood throughout their generations. Thus did Moses according to to all that the Lord commanded him. So did he. And it came to pass in the first month and the second year on the first day of the month that the tabernacle was reared up and Moses reared up the tabernacle and fastened his sockets and set up the boards thereof and put in the bars thereof and reared up his pillars. And he spread abroad the tent over the tabernacle and put the covering of the tent upon it as the Lord commanded Moses. And he took and put the testimony into the ark and set the staves on the ark and put the mercy seat above upon the ark. And he brought the ark into the tabernacle and set up the veil of the covering and covered the ark of the testimony as the Lord commanded Moses. And he put the table in the tent of the congregation upon the side of the tabernacle northward without the veil. And he set the bread in order upon it before the Lord as the Lord had commanded Moses. And he put the candlestick in the tent of the congregation over against the table on the side of the tabernacle southward. And he lighted the lamps before the Lord as the Lord commanded Moses. And he put the golden altar in the tent of the congregation before the veil. And he burnt sweet incense thereon as the Lord commanded Moses. And he set up the hanging at the door of the tabernacle and he put the altar of burnt offering by the door of the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation and offered upon it the burnt offering and the meat offering as the Lord commanded Moses. And he set the labor between the tent of the congregation and the altar and put water there to wash with all. And Moses and Aaron and his sons washed their hands and their feet thereat when they went into the tent of the congregation and when they came near unto the altar, they washed as the Lord commanded Moses. And he reared up the court round about the tabernacle and the altar and set up the hanging of the court gate. So Moses is finished the work. Then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle and Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation because the cloud abode thereon and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And when the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the children of Israel went onward in all their journeys. But if the cloud were not taken up, then they journeyed not till the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was upon the tabernacle by day and fire was on it by night in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys. Numbers chapter seven. And it came to pass on the day that Moses had fully set up the tabernacle and had anointed it and sanctified it and all the instruments thereof, both the altar and all the vessels thereof, and had anointed them and sanctified them that the princes of Israel, heads of the house of their fathers, who were the princes of the tribes and were over them that were numbered, offered. And they brought their offering before the Lord, six covered wagons and 12 oxen, a wagon for two of the princes and for each one an ox. And they brought them before the tabernacle. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, take it of them that they may be to, to do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. And thou shalt give them unto the Levites to every man according to his service. And Moses took the wagons and the oxen and gave them unto the Levites, two wagons and four oxen 
he gave unto the sons of Gershon, according to their service, and four wagons and eighty oxen he gave unto the sons of Maria, according to their service, under the hand of Ithamar, the son of Aaron the priest, but unto the sons of Kohath he gave none, because the service of the sanctuary belonging unto them was that they should bear upon their shoulders. And the princes offered for dedicating of the altar in the day that it was anointed, even the princes offered their offering before the altar. And the Lord said unto Moses, they shall offer their offering, each prince on his day for the dedicating of the altar. And he that offered his offering the first day was Nashon, the son of Amadab of the tribe of Judah. And his offering was one silver charger, the weight whereof was 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary. Both of them were full of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering, one spoon of 10 shekels of gold full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offering, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Nashon, the son of Anamadab. On the second day, Neanthaniel, the son of Zerar, prince of Issachar, did offer. He offered for his offering one silver charger, the weight whereof was 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering, one spoon of gold of 10 shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Neanthanel, the son of Zuar. On the third day, Eliab, the son of Helion, prince of the children of Zebulun, did offer. His offering was one silver charger, the weight whereof was 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering, one golden spoon full of 10 shekels, full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offering, Two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Eliab, the son of Helion. On the fourth day, Eleazar, the son of Shedor, Shedor, prince of the children of Reuben, did offer. His offering was one silver charger of the weight of 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering, one golden spoon of 10 shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Eleazar, the son of Shedor. On the fifth day, Shilamiel, the son of Jerushadai, prince of the children of Simeon, did offer his offerings, one silver charger, the weight whereof was 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering, one golden spoon of 10 shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Shilamuel, the son of Jerohashadai. On the sixth day, Alasaph, the son of Deol, prince of the children of Gad, offered. His offering was one silver charger of the weight of 130 shekels, a silver bowl of 70 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering, one golden spoon of 10 shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five Lambs of the first year, this was the offering of Elisaph, the son of Deuel. On the seventh day, 
Elishama, the son of Amihud, prince of the children of Ephraim, offered. His offering was one silver charger. The weight whereof was 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering. One golden spoon of ten shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Elishama, the son of Amuhud. On the eighth day, offered Gamaliel, the son of Petazur, prince of the children of Manasseh. His offering was one silver charger of the weight of 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering, one golden spoon of 10 shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Gamaliel, the son of Petazur. On the ninth day, Abadan, the son of Gideoni, prince of the children of Benjamin, offered. His offering was one silver charger. The weight thereof was 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering, one golden spoon of 10 shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Abadan, the son of Grioni. On the 10th day, Ahazer, the son of Amma, Amma Shaddai, prince of the children of Dan, offered his offering was one silver charger. The weight whereof was 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary. Both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering one golden spoon of 10 shekels full of incense, one young bull, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Ahaziar, the son of Amishadai. On the eleventh day, Pegio, the son of Okran, prince of the children of Asher, offered. Can you guess what he offered? His offer was one silver charger. The weight whereof was 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering, one golden spoon of 10 shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering and for a sacrifice of peace offering. Two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Hagel, the son of Okran. On the twelfth day, Ahaya, the son of Enon, prince of the children of Naphtali, offered. His offering, you got it, was one silver charger, the weight whereof was 130 shekels, one silver bowl of 70 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering, one golden spoon of 10 shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year, this was the offering of 
Ahara, the son of Enon. This was the dedication of the altar in the day when it was anointed by the princes of Israel. Twelve charges of silver, twelve silver bowls, twelve spoons of gold. Each charge of silver weighing 130 shekels, each bowl 70. All the silver vessels weighed 2,400 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary. The golden spoons were 12 full of incense, weighing 10 shekels apiece after the shekel of the sanctuary. All the gold of the spoon was 120 shekels. All the oxen for the burnt offering were 12 bullocks, the rams 12, the lambs of the first year 12 with their meat offering, and the kids of the goats for sin offering 12. And all the oxen of for the sacrifice of the peace offerings were 20 and four bullocks, the rams 60, the he goat 60, the lambs of the first year 60, this was the dedication of the altar. After that, it was anointed. And when Moses was gone into the tabernacle of the congregation to speak with them, then he heard the voice of one speaking unto him from off the mercy seat that was upon the ark of testimony from between the two cherubims, and he spake unto him. Numbers chapter eight. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, speak unto Aaron and say unto him, when thou lightest the lamps, the seven lamps shall give light over against the candlestick. And Aaron did so. He lighted the lamps thereof over against the candlesticks as the, as the Lord commanded Moses. And this work of the candlestick was of beaten gold unto the shaft thereof, unto the flowers thereof was beaten work, according unto the pattern which the Lord had showed Moses. So he made the candlestick. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, take the Levites from among the children of Israel and cleanse them. And thus shalt thou do unto them to cleanse them. Sprinkle water of purifying upon them and let them shave all their flesh and let them wash their clothes and so make themselves clean. Then let them take a young bullock with his meat offering, even fine flour mingled with oil and another young bullock shall thou take for a sin offering and thou shalt bring the Levites before the tabernacle of the congregation and thou shalt gather the whole assembly of the children of Israel together and thou shalt bring the Levites before the Lord. And the children of Israel shall put their hands upon the Levites. And Aaron shall offer the Levites before the Lord for an offering of the children of Israel, that they may execute the service of the Lord. And the Levites shall lay their hands upon the heads of the bullocks, and thou shalt offer the one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering unto the Lord to make an atonement for the Levites. And thou shalt set the Levites before Aaron and before his sons and offer them for an offering unto the Lord. Thus shalt thou separate the Levites from among the children of Israel and the Levites shall be mine. And after that shall the Levites go in to do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. And thou shalt cleanse them and offer them for an offering for they are wholly given unto me from among the children of Israel instead of such as open every womb, even instead of the firstborn of all the children of Israel, have I taken them unto me. For all the firstborn of the children of Israel are mine, both man and beast. On the day that I smote every firstborn in the land of Egypt, I sanctified them for myself. And I've taken the Levites for all the firstborn of the children of Israel. And I've given the Levites as a gift to Aaron and to his sons from among the children of Israel to do the service of the children of Israel in the tabernacle of the congregation and to make an atonement for the children of Israel that there be no plague among the children of Israel when the children of Israel come nigh unto the sanctuary. And Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel did to the Levites according unto all that the Lord commanded Moses concerning the Levites. So did the children of Israel unto them. And the Levites were purified and they washed their clothes and Aaron offered them as an offering before the Lord. And Aaron made an atonement for them to cleanse them. And after that, 
went the Levites in to do their service in the tabernacle of the congregation before Aaron and before his sons. As the Lord had commanded Moses concerning the Levites, so did they unto them. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, This is it that belongeth unto the Levites. From twenty and five years old and upward, they shall go in to wait upon the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. And from the age of fifty years, they shall cease waiting upon the service thereof and shall serve no more, but shall minister with their brethren in the tabernacle of the congregation to keep the charge and shall do no service. Thus shalt thou do unto the Levites touching their charge. Numbers chapter nine. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai in the first month of the second year after they were come out of the land of Egypt saying, let the children of Israel also keep the Passover at his appointed season. In the 14th day of the month, that even ye shall keep it in his appointed season, according to all the rites of it, and according to all the ceremonies thereof, shall ye keep it. And Moses spake unto the children of Israel that they should keep the Passover. And they kept the Passover in the 14th day of the first month, and even in the wilderness of Sinai, according to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so did the children of Israel. And there were certain men who were defiled by the dead body of a man, that they could not keep the Passover on that day. And it came before Moses and before Aaron on that day. And those men said unto him, we are defiled by the dead body of a man. Wherefore are we kept back that we may not offer an offering of the Lord in his appointed season among the children of Israel? And Moses said unto them, stand still and I will hear what the Lord will command concerning you. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, speak unto the children of Israel saying, if any man of you or of your posterity shall be unclean by reason of a dead body or by, or be in a journey afar off, yet he shall keep the Passover unto the Lord. The 14th day of the second month, and even they shall keep it and eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They shall leave none of it into the morning, nor break any bone on it. According to all the ordinances of the Passover, they shall keep it. But the man that is clean and is not in a journey and forbear to keep the Passover, even the same soul shall be cut off from among his people because he brought not the offering of the Lord in his appointed season. That man shall bear his sin. And if a stranger shall sojourn among you and will keep the Passover unto the Lord, according to the ordinance of the Passover and according to the manner thereof, so shall he do. Ye shall have one ordinance, both for the stranger and for him that was born in the land. And on that day that the tabernacle was reared up, the cloud covered the tabernacle, namely the tent of the testimony. And at even there was upon the tabernacle, as it were, the appearance of fire until the morning. So it was always the cloud covered it by day and the appearance of fire by night. And when the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, then after that, the children of Israel journeyed and in the place where the cloud abode, there the children of Israel pitched their tents. At the commandment of the Lord, the children of Israel journeyed and at the command of the Lord, they pitched. As long as the cloud abode upon the tabernacle, they rested in their tents. And when the cloud tarried long upon the tabernacle many days, then the children of Israel kept the the charge of the Lord and journeyed not. And so it was when the cloud was a few days upon the tabernacle, according to the commandment of the Lord, they abode in their tents. And according to the commandment of the Lord, they journeyed. And so it was when the cloud abode from even unto the morning and that the cloud was taken up in the morning, then they journeyed, whether it was by night or by day that the cloud was taken up, they journeyed. Or where there were two days or a month or a year that the cloud tarried upon the tabernacle remaining thereon, the children of Israel abode in their tents and journeyed not. But when it was taken up, they journeyed. At the commandment of the Lord, they rested in the tents and at the commandment of the Lord, they journeyed. They kept the charge of the Lord at the commandment of the Lord by the hand of Moses. Leviticus chapter one. 
And the Lord called unto Moses and spake unto him out of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, If any man of you bring an offering unto the Lord, ye shall bring your offering of the cattle, even on the herd and of the flock. If his offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a male without blemish. He shall offer it of his own voluntary will at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord. And she shall put his hand upon the head of the burnt offering, and it shall be accepted for him to make atonement for him. And he shall kill the bullock before the Lord. And the priest, Aaron's son, shall bring the blood and sprinkle the blood round about upon the altar that is by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he shall flay the burnt offering and cut it into his pieces. And the sons of Aaron, the priest shall put fire upon the altar and lay the wood in order upon the fire. And the priest Aaron's son shall lay the parts, the head and the fat in order upon the wood that is on the fire, which is upon the altar. But his inwards and his legs shall he wash in water and the priest shall burn all on the altar to be a burnt sacrifice an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. And if his offerings be of the flocks, namely of the sheep or of the goats for a burnt offering, he shall bring it a male without blemish. He shall kill it on the side of the altar northward before the Lord and the priest Aaron's son shall sprinkle his blood round about upon the altar and he shall cut it into his pieces with his head and his fat and the priest shall lay them in order on the wood that is on the fire, which is upon the altar, but he shall wash the inwards and the legs with water and the priest shall bring it all and burn it upon the altar. It is a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire of a sweet, savory, savor unto the Lord. And if the burnt offering sacrifice for his offering to the Lord be of fowls, then he shall bring his offering of turtle doves or of young pigeons. And the priest shall bring it into the altar and wring off his neck and burn it on the altar. And the blood thereof shall be wrung out at the side of the altar. And he shall pluck away his crop and his feathers and cast it beside the altar on the east part by the place of the ashes. And he shall cleave it with the wings thereof, but shall not divide it asunder. And the priest shall burn it upon the altar, upon the wood that is upon the fire. It is a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. Leviticus chapter two. And when any will offer a meat offering unto the Lord, his offering shall be a fine flour and he shall pour oil upon it and put frankincense thereon. And he shall bring it to Aaron's sons, the priests, and he shall take their out his handful of the flour thereof and of the oil thereof with all the frankincense thereof and and the priest shall burn the memorial of it upon the altar to be an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord and the remnant of the meat offering shall be Aaron's and his sons it's a thing most holy of the offerings of the Lord made by fire And if thou bring an oblation of a meat offering, bacon in the oven, it shall be unleavened cakes of fine flour mingled with oil or unleavened wafers anointed with oil. And if thou oblation be a meat offering, bacon in a pan, it shall be a fine flour unleavened mingled with oil. Thou shalt part it in pieces and pour oil thereon. It is a meat offering. And if thou oblation be a meat offering, bacon in the frying pan it shall be made of fine flour with oil and thou shalt bring the meat offering that is made of these things unto the lord and when it is presented unto the priest he shall bring it unto the altar and the priest shall take from the meat offering a memorial thereof and shall burn it upon the altar it's a meat offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the lord and that which is left of the meat offering shall be Aaron's and his sons. It's a thing most holy of the offerings of the Lord made by fire. No meat offering which ye shall bring unto the Lord shall be made with leaven, for ye shall burn no leaven nor any honey in any offering of the Lord made by fire. As for the oblation of the first fruit, ye shall offer them unto the Lord, but they shall not be burnt on the altar for a sweet savor 
and every oblation of thy meat offering shall thou season with salt. Neither shall thou suffer the salt of the covenant of thy God to be lacking from thy meat offering. With all thine offerings thou shalt offer salt. And if thou offer a meat offering of thy first fruits unto the Lord, thou shalt offer for the meat offering of thy first fruit green ears of corn dried by the fire, even corn beaten out of full ears, and thou shalt put oil upon it and lay frankincense thereon. It's a meat offering. And the priest shall burn the memorial of it, part of the beaten corn thereof, and part of the oil thereof, with all the frankincense thereof. It is an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Leviticus chapter 3. And if his oblation be a sacrifice of peace offering, if he offer it of the herd, whether it be a male or female, he shall offer it without blemish before the Lord. And he shall lay his hand upon the head of his offering and kill it at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron's sons, the priest shall sprinkle the blood upon the altar round about, and he shall offer of the sacrifice of the peace offering, an offering made by fire unto the Lord, the fat that covereth the inwards and all the fat that is upon the inwards and the two kidneys and the fat that is on them, which is by the flanks and the call above the liver with the kidneys, it shall he take away. And Aaron's son shall burn it on the altar upon the burnt sacrifice, which is upon the wood that is on the fire. It is an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. And if his offering for a sacrifice of peace offering unto the Lord be of the flock, male or female, he shall offer it without blemish. If he offer a lamb for his offering, then shall he offer it before the Lord. She lay his hand upon the head of the offering and kill it before the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron's son shall sprinkle the blood thereof round about upon the altar. And he shall offer of the sacrifice of the peace offering, an offering made by fire unto the Lord, the fat thereof and the whole rump. It shall be, it shall take off hard by the backbone and the fat that covered the inwards and all the fat that is upon the inwards and the two kidneys and the fat that is upon them, which is by the flanks and the call above the liver with the kidneys. It shall he take away and the priest shall burn it upon the altar. It is the food of the offering made by fire unto the Lord. And if his offering be a goat, then he shall offer it before the Lord. And he shall lay his hand upon his head of it and kill it before the tabernacle of the congregation. And the sons of Aaron shall spring the blood thereof upon the altar round about. He shall offer thereof his offering, even an offering made by fire unto the Lord. The fat that covers the inwards and all the fat that is upon the inwards and the two kidneys and the fat that is upon them, which is by the flanks and the call of other liver with the kidneys, it shall be taken away. And the priest shall burn them upon the altar. It is a food of the offering made by the fire for a sweet savor. All the fat is the Lord's. It shall be a perpetual statue for your generations throughout all your dwellings that ye eat neither fat nor blood. Leviticus chapter four. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a soul shall sin through ignorance against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which ought not to be done and shall do against any of them, if the priest that is anointed do sin according to the sin of the people, then let him bring for his sin, which he had sinned, a young bullock without blemish unto the Lord for a sin offering. And he shall bring the bullock unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord and shall lay his hand upon the bullock's head and kill the bullock before the Lord. And the priest that is anointed shall take of the bullock's blood and bring it to the tabernacle of the congregation. And the priest shall dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle of the blood seven times before the Lord, before the veil of the sanctuary. And the priest shall put some of the blood upon the horns of the altar, sweet incense before the Lord, which is in the tabernacle of the congregation and shall pour all the blood of the bullock at the bottom of the altar of the burnt offering, which is at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he shall take off from it all the fat of the bullock for the sin offering, the fat that covered the inwards and all the fat that is upon the inwards and the two kidneys and the fat that is upon them, which is by the flanks and the call above the liver with the kidneys. 
it shall he take away as it was taken off from the bullock of the sacrifice of peace offerings and the priest shall burn them upon the altar of the burnt offering and the skin of the bullock and all the flesh with his, his head and his legs and his inwards and his dung even the whole bullock shall he carry forth without the camp unto a clean place where the ashes are poured out and burn him on the wood with fire where the ashes are poured out shall he be burnt and if the whole congregation of israel sin through ignorance and the thing be hid from the eyes of the assembly and they have done somewhat against any of the commandments of the lord concerning things which should not be done and are guilty when the sin which they have sinned against it is known then the congregation shall offer a young bullock for the sin and bring him before the tabernacle of the congregation and the elders of the congregation shall lay their hands upon the head of the bullock before the lord and the bullock shall be killed before the Lord. And the priest that is anointed shall bring of the bullock's blood to the tabernacle of the congregation. And the priest shall dip his finger in some of the blood and sprinkle it seven times before the Lord, even before the veil. And he shall put some of the blood upon the horns of the altar, which is before the Lord. That is in the tabernacle of the congregation and shall pour out all blood of at the bottom of the altar of the burnt offering, which is at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he shall take all his fat from him and burn it upon the altar. And he shall do with the bullock as he did with the bullock for a sin offering. So shall he do with this. And the priest shall make an atonement for him and it shall be forgiven then. And he shall carry forth the bullock without the camp and burn him as he burned the first bullock. It is a sin offering for the congregation. When a ruler had sinned and done somewhat, you know, through ignorance against any of the commandments of the Lord, his God concerning things which should not be done and is guilty, or if his sin were in, he had sinned, come to his knowledge, he shall bring his offering, a kid of the goats, a male without blemish, and he shall lay his hand upon the head of the goat and kill it in the place where they kill the burnt offering before the Lord. It is a sin offering. And the priest shall take of the blood of the sin offering and his finger and put it upon the horns of the altar of the burnt offering and shall pour out his blood at the bottom of the altar of burnt offering. And he shall burn all his fat upon the altar as the fat of the sacrifice of peace offerings. And the priest shall make an atonement for him as concerning his sin and it shall be forgiven him. And if any one of the common people sin through ignorance, while he doeth somewhat against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which ought not to be done and be guilty, or if his sin, which he'd sin, come to his knowledge, then he shall bring his offering, a kid of the goats, a female without blemish, for his sin, which he had sinned, and he shall lay his hand upon the head of the sin offering and slay the sin offering, the place of the burnt offering. And the priest shall take of the blood thereof with his, with his finger and put it upon the horns of the altar of burnt offering and shall pour out all the blood thereof at the bottom of the altar. She'll take away all the fat thereof as the fat is taken away from all the sacrifice of peace offerings and the priest shall burn it upon the altar for a sweet savor unto the Lord and the priest shall make an atonement for him and it shall be forgiven him. And if he bring a lamb for a sin offering, he shall bring it a female without blemish. And he shall lay his hand upon the head of the sin offering and slay it for a sin offering in the place where they kill the burnt offering. And the priest shall take of the blood of the sin offering with his finger and put it upon the horns of the altar of burnt offering and pour out the blood thereof at the bottom of the altar and he shall take away all the fat thereof as the fat of the lamb is taken away from the sacrifice of the peace offerings. And the priest shall burn them upon the altar according to the offerings made by fire unto the Lord. And the priest shall make an atonement for his sins that he hath committed and it shall be forgiven him. Leviticus chapter 5.
And if a soul sin and hear the voice of swearing and is a witness, whether he had seen or known of it, if he do not utter it, then he shall bear his iniquity. Or if a soul touch any unclean thing, whether it be a carcass of an unclean beast or a carcass of unclean cattle or the carcass of unclean creeping things, and if it be hidden from him, he also shall be unclean and guilty. Or if he touch the uncleanness of man, whatsoever uncleanness it be, that a man shall be defiled withal, and it be hid from him. When he knoweth of it, then he shall be guilty. Or if a soul swear, pronouncing with his lips to do evil or to do good, whatsoever it be that a man shall pronounce with an oath, and it be hid from him, when he knoweth of it, then he shall be guilty in one of these. And it shall be, when he shall be guilty in one of these things, that he shall confess that he has sinned in that thing, and he shall bring his trespass offering unto the Lord for his sin, which he hath sinned, a female from the flock, a lamb or a kid of the goats for a sin offering, and the priest shall make an atonement for him according concerning his sin. And if he be not able to bring a lamb, then he shall bring for his trespass, which he committed, two turtle doves or two young pigeons unto the Lord, one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering. And he shall bring them unto the priest who shall offer that which is for the sin offering first and wring off his head from his neck, but shall not divide it asunder. And he shall sprinkle of the blood of the sin offering upon the side of the altar and the rest of the blood shall be wrung out at the bottom of the altar. It is a sin offering, and he shall offer the second for a burnt offering according to the manner, and the priest shall make an atonement for him for his sin, which he hath sinned, and it shall be forgiven him. But if he be not able to bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons, then he that sins shall bring for his offering the tenth part of an ephah for fine flour for a sin offering. He shall put no oil upon it, neither shall he put any frankincense thereon, for it is a sin offering. Then shall he bring it to the priest, and the priest shall take his handful of it, even a memorial thereof, and burn it on the altar, according to the offerings made by fire unto the Lord. It's a sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for him as touching his sin that he hath sinned in one of these, and it shall be forgiven him, and the remnant shall be the priest's as a meat offering. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, If a soul commit a trespass and sin through ignorance in the holy things of the Lord, then he shall, he shall bring for his trespass unto the Lord a ram without blemish out of the flocks, and Thy estimation by shekels of silver after the shekel of the sanctuary for a trespass offering, and he shall make amends for the harm that he hath done in the holy thing, and shall add the fifth part thereto, and give it unto the priest, and the priest shall make an atonement for him with the ram of the trespass offering, and it shall be forgiven him. And if a soul sin and commit any of these things which are forbidden to be done by the commandments of the Lord, though he wist it not, yet he's guilty and shall bear his iniquity, shall bring a ram without blemish out of the flock with thy estimation for a trespass offering unto the priest, and the priest shall make an atonement for him concerning his ignorance wherein he erred and wist it not, and it shall be forgiven him. It is a trespass offering. He that certainly trespass against the Lord. Leviticus chapter 6. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, If a soul sin and commit a trespass against the Lord, and lie unto his neighbor in that which was delivered him to keep, or in fellowship, or in a thing taken away by violence, or have deceived his neighbor, or have found that which was lost, and lieth concerning it, and sweareth it falsely, and any of all these that a man doeth, sinning therein, then it shall be because he'd sinned and is guilty that he shall restore 
that which he took violently away or the thing which he hath deceitfully gotten or that which was delivered him to keep or the lost thing which he found or all that about which he had sworn falsely, he shall even restore it in the principle and shall add the fifth part more thereto and give it unto him to whom it appertaineth in the day of his trespass offering. And he shall bring his trespass offering unto the Lord, a ram without blemish out of the flock with thy estimation for a trespass offering unto the priest. And the priest shall make an atonement for him before the Lord and it shall be forgiven him for anything of all that he hath done in trespassing therein. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, command Aaron and his son saying, this is the law of the burnt offering. It is the burnt offering because of the burning upon the altar all night unto the morning and the fire of the altar shall be burning in it. And the priest shall put on his linen garment and his linen breeches shall he put upon his flesh and take up the ashes, which the fire hath consumed with the burnt offering on the altar. And he shall put them beside the altar and he shall put off his garments and put on other garments and carry forth the ashes without the camp unto a clean place. And the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it. It shall not be put out. And the priest shall burn wood on it every morning and lay the burnt offering in order upon it. And he shall burn thereon the fat of the peace offerings. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. Hmm. Hmm. And this is the law of the meat offering. The sons of Aaron shall offer it before the Lord, before the altar, and he shall take of it his handful of the flour of the meat offering and of the oil thereof, and all the frankincense which is upon the meat offering, and shall burn it upon the altar for a sweet savor, even the memorial of it unto the Lord. And the remainder thereof shall Aaron and his sons eat, with unleavened bread shall it be eaten in the holy place in the court of the tabernacle of the congregation they shall eat. It shall not be bacon with leaven. I have given it unto them for their portion of my offerings made by fire. It is most holy as is a sin offering and as a trespass offering. All the males among the children of Aaron shall eat of it it shall be a statue forever in your generations concerning the offerings of the Lord made by fire. Every one that toucheth them shall be holy. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, This is the offering of Aaron and of his sons, which they shall offer unto the Lord in the day when he is anointed the tenth part of an ephah of fine flour for a meat offering perpetual half of it in the morning and half thereof at night in a pan it shall be made with oil and when it is bacon thou shalt bring it in and the bacon pieces of the meat offering shall thou offer for a sweet savory unto the lord savor unto the lord and the priest of his sons that is anointed in his steed shall offer it. It is a statue forever unto the Lord. It shall be wholly burnt. For every meat offering for the priest shall be wholly burnt. It shall not be eaten. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and to his sons, saying, This is the law of the sin offering. In the place where the burnt offering is killed, shall the sin offering be killed before the Lord. It is most holy. The priest that offereth it for sin shall eat it, and the holy place shall it be eaten in the court of the tabernacle of the congregation. Whatsoever shall touch the flesh thereof shall be holy, and when there is sprinkled of the blood thereof upon any garment, thou shalt wash 
that were on, it was sprinkled in the holy place. But the earthen vessels wherein it is sodden shall be broken. And if it be sodden in a brazen pot, it shall be both scoured and rinsed in water. All the males among the priests shall eat thereof. It is most holy. And no sin offering whereof any of the blood is brought into the tabernacle of the congregation to reconcile with all in the holy place shall be eaten. It shall be burnt in the fire. God bless the reading of his word. Until next time, beloves, stay blessed.